Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Can everyone hear me? Can you guys see the screen? Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. We are seeing you, sir. All right, so what did you guys learn Friday? Is there anything you guys missed the new specifically that you want me to cover in this lesson? Or should I just cover everything? So yeah, let's cover everything. Yes, I'm not. All right, so let's uh let's go back from the start, right? Let's start with moments again. So one of the first lessons we learned during this course is the principle of moments or balance in tools. We learned that let's take this seesaw for example. If there's a downward force at this end at some distance, let's say B, from the pivot, then to make, to balance the system, we need some combination of a force and the distance from the pivot that's equal to these two, to the product of these two. In numbers, which you might understand better, what that means is for some force A, some force B, for them to balance the system, A times the distance of A from the fulcrum needs to be equal to B times the distance of B from the fulcrum. And this is just the principle of moments. This is clockwise moments equals anti-clockwise moments, right? Yeah? Now, yes, sir. We did all sorts of other things with moments, right? We moved the pivot point from the middle to the end, making this thing rotate about an end. And we say for a force like this, to counteract these two, the sum of the moments of these two need to be equal to the moments of about this point, right? So that this situation would look a bit different, right? It would look like something like A times the distance of A from the pivot, which is here, right? Plus B times the distance of B from the pivot, so this distance from here to here, okay, is equal to C, let's call this word C, times the distance of C from the pivot point. Yeah, something like that. And this is similarly this here, clockwise, this here, clockwise, this here, anti-clockwise. So this is just the principle of moment. So just recapping, making sure everyone knows that. Okay. So let's take it up a notch. Let's get a little bit more advanced with this principle of moment. So the moments that we've covered so far, the forces on these, members, be it a seesaw, a beam, something like that, are usually perpendicular, yeah? They come straight down like this, onto the floor. Come straight down, or they go straight up into it. They're perpendicular, yeah? But what would happen if a force were to say, come in at this angle? What would happen to this seesaw? Well, we know from components, right? So we can break this, this vector up, this force here, into two components. Call it A. This is a vector, and that just represents a force. We can break this up into two components. We can say that, okay, this is this way, with some angle, theta, no horizontal, Two 
two components, the vertical one, right? Vertical one and the horizontal one. Horizontal one. Go like this, right? They go like this. So it's kind of like resolving it, like doing the reverse of the result. And resultants, when you would add these two up, to find the resultant, but this way you're breaking it back down into its components, breaking the force back down into vertical, horizontal components. Yeah. Okay, good. So here, this is theta. So xv, the vertical component, would be something like the magnitude of this, right? Magnitude, however long this is, how much ever newtons, times sine theta yeah and the, the horizontal one would be the same magnitude cosine theta yep everyone understands how, how we get this fairly simple as your vertical and your horizontal components. Now let's break this force down that comes into this, this member at an angle. Let's say that it's made up of two components again, right? A vertical one and a horizontal one, right? But let's move the vertical one and put it here at the same point, yeah? The reason we move it is because I want to accurately represent where this force acts. The vertical component doesn't act over here, right? It acts at the same point. It's just that it's within this force. Okay. So let's put both at this point. Put the horizontal one right here. Thing there. And put the vertical one right here. Yeah. Acting yeah, down. And we know the horizontal and vertical components are like this. Now let's analyze. In this system, if this system was in equilibrium, they would have, have to have some sort of counter force here, right? That's, that's opposing this. Yeah, so some force like this maybe, that's opposing this. And it would, of course, have its corresponding vertical and horizontal components. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at the horizontal components. What's happening to them? In a balanced system, because remember, this system isn't shaking side to side, right? It's not shaking side to side. It's balanced. So what that must tell us is that these two forces counteract each other or the pivot point there's some anchor here some hinge okay some hinge some hinge some kind of anchor that is strong enough to withstand these two this sideways pushing these sideways components causing this seesaw or whatever system to not move from side to side to not be shaking or to not go flying one way or flying the other way so we can then say that these these components here they cancel out yeah this one cancels out with this one easy enough and now what we're left with what actually rotates the system are these vertical components, yeah? Actually rotates the systems are these vertical components. And forgetting everything else, forgetting these horizontal ones, and now we remove the horizontal components, so all that's left 
is the vertical component. And the vertical component, that's what does the rotational movement. That's, what, that's where the moments are. That's what tries to rotate the system, the, 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 um, the vertical components, or more precisely, the components that are perpendicular to the member, right? Perpendicular to the member. So let's move on to a different kind of system. Let's say we had something hanging, right? Something hanging here. And it's of course hinged at this point, yeah? Hinged at this point. Now, let's remember that in the horizontal seesaw, we had a force, but the sideways one weren't, wasn't working, right? Because the system was in equilibrium, they cancel each other out. And the horizontal ones, the, um, the vertical ones, the perpendicular ones were the ones that were causing the system to rotate, that were trying to rotate the system. But they ended up balancing each other out, right? Because the rotational point was the middle. For this one, let's say we had had again a force coming into it like this, right? Coming into it like this. Now, and then we break this one again up into a horizontal component. Horizontal component and the component that's along the member. And from this experiment, this little analysis here, we we had seen that forces along the member cancel out each other if the system is in equilibrium. If this pushes up, this, this whatever pushes back down at this point because it's rigid, right? If not, it would push this and this system would go flying through the ceiling or whatever. Or if there was something like this going down, the component of this, this way, would cause this to come off here and, and fall down, okay? So these horizontal forces cancel out. And what we're left with, these um, vertical forces cancel out. And what we're left with is the horizontal component. The horizontal component. Now, this one, is the horizontal component, and this one is the vertical component. So how do we determine? Well, moments are usually calculated using the forces that are, again, orthogonal or 90 degrees perpendicular to the member, right? 90 degrees to the member, perpendicular to the member. And here, we broke it down the vertical and horizontal components, but this one we broke it down the horizontal and vertical component. So, what if we in, instead had something a little bit more complicated? So we're moving up. Okay? We're moving from the horizontal seesaw to a vertical hanging member. And now we're going into something different. Something like something that's slanted, but still hinged. And let's say now we had force coming into it. Let's say a perfectly horizontal force. A perfectly horizontal force. Yeah. So even though this force is perfectly horizontal from the reference point of this slanted member, this force it is at an angle. So Instead of resolving it in its vertical and horizontal components, what we instead need to do is resolve it into orthogonal components. What that means is, again, a force that is a force that is A along the member, right? And B perpendicular to the member, yeah? Perfect. 
you guys. And of course, we can move this over here. Because we want to represent specifically which point does this force act, right? Here. And what we'll find, like all the others, is that the horizontal force doesn't, the, um, the, the force parallel to the member that runs along the member, as long as the system is in equilibrium, we know all of them cancel out. The, the sum of them are equal to zero. Okay? And the ones perpendicular to the member are the ones that are causing the moments. Yeah. So let's just look at our ladder diagram. But don't worry about how we got the direction of the forces as yet. I'll tell you about that a little later. If we were to look at this force here, right? We could say, okay, let's break this force down into two components. One, that's here, parallel, that runs along the member, and another one that's orthogonal to the member, yeah? Orthogonal to the member. And we could, of course, move this one here, right? Move this force here and put it here so that we know where it's acting, right? The point where it's acting, yeah? So this here is 60 degrees. In this question, this here is 60 degrees. So what's, what's this force? Yeah, what's this force? Well, this force is sine 60 times, what is this? Fw, right? Fw. And if you were to say, let's, we're taking moments, right? And this was the end point, the ground, the, the length of this ladder, we'll, we'll work the question thoroughly later. Let's say it was six meters or five meters. The moments here, if we were calculating moments about this point, would be this times six or five or how much ever meters, right? Which is something that you would see in, in class with Miss, right? Something like this. Yeah. But maybe she had it a little differently. Yeah. Maybe she had it a little differently. And the distance here from here to the point would be six. Good. So when we talk about the ladder moments, what we're doing is we're looking at all the forces in the ladder and we're saying, let's take the orthogonal components of these forces the ones that actually rotate the ladder, try to rotate the ladder, the balancing torques, and find the distances they are from, from the rotational point and find the perpendicular components, right? The components that are perpendicular to the member. And that's what we're doing. And we're seeing the anti-clockwise ones equal to the clockwise ones. And we're using that to solve for our unknown forces. Yeah. So let's now figure out the directions of these forces. Okay, good. Number 24. A ladder five meters long, five meters long, rests at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal, 60 degrees to the horizontal, with its upper end against a smooth, smooth vertical wall and its lower end on rough ground, rough ground. The ladder has a mass of 20 kgs, and the weight of the ladder may be assumed to act at a point two meters from the lower end. Two meters from the lower end. Determine the reactions of the wall and of the ground. So, simple system, we put a ladder, wall, ground, 60 degrees, set up, right? We know the length of ladder is five meters long. The weight of the ladder is 20 kgs and that weight acts at a distance of two meters from the lower end, two meters from the lower end. And we set our system. And what we're left to do now is figure out the forces. So now they say it's upper end against a smooth vertical wall and lower end on rough ground. 
we know weight acts vertically downward and we know that it's acting at a point two meters from the lower end. We don't know where FW is going and we don't know where FG is going, but we know that the system is in equilibrium. So however we put them in, they should form a triangle. So let's figure out, let's start here on smooth, on a smooth vertical wall. So generally in systems, there's something called contact forces. Contact forces. So let's pretend there is a there is a table and something was to be coming at it in this direction. Yeah, some something maybe you're pressing your finger in this angle or it's a bat and you're pushing it along something like that right and this here is just a simple table now at this point this point there's something we call the contact force is at this point yeah the contact force and at the point we say that there are two forces one force two forces the first one, normal force, the force normal to the object, and frictional force. Now, let's think about that. when whatever, if I beat your finger or something, you come and you press down at an angle, the system, right? What the system is going to do is react back in that same way. So when this presses down this way, the system is going to react. Just like this, yeah? Just like this. So let's move this here. System's gonna react in that same angle. And we can say that this here is comprised of two, two things. One, a force normal, a force normal to the table, and a frictional force. Now, the reason we call this one that runs parallel to the tail, the frictional force, is because if you try it up here, and let's say you're sliding your finger across the table, right? What's going to resist you is friction. Friction is going to be the one pushing back this way, trying to stop your finger from moving, right? Okay. So this here, Fn plus R. Is equal to the reaction of of the table or the ladder or the wall. That's what I is equal to, right? So here, so this here is R reaction, and this plus this was equal to. So now, if this is smooth vertical wall, what does that mean? That means that the friction is zero or close to zero, right? So if the force introduced by friction is zero, right? Then the reaction should just be Fn, wouldn't it? If the friction is reduced to zero, to reduce friction. Look like the wash wants to close. We reduce friction. Reduce friction and this here starts to straighten up. You know what? Watch. And if we completely remove friction, then it'll just be F of N. Yeah? That's simple and intuitive. So when they say smooth, Vertical wall, the wall, and there's a ladder pressing up onto it. Remember, there's supposed to be two forces, right? To so, react. Yeah. But it's a smooth vertical wall, so there is no friction. So the only force left is the one normal to the wall. 
The only force left is the one normal to the wall, which is this one. So when we see here something is smooth, we know that the reaction at the contact point should be 90 degrees or perpendicular to, to the member, to the object. Now, on something rough, right, rough, and in this case, the floor, rough floor, we have the thing coming in at an angle, right? The ladder coming in at an angle, and its reactions are, well, here, the normal and uh, let me not put that right. Normal and the frictional, yeah, frictional to a green color. So we know that a reaction for this one should be in this general direction, but we don't know exactly how long or how much of a resistance friction puts, right? We don't know. We know the ground is rough, but they didn't tell us how rough, right? How rough is the ground? We don't know. So what we need to do is make a guess and just assume that hey, it moves in this general direction, right? Because the ladder is coming this way, pushing in, so frictional force should be anywhere around here, yeah? Depending on how much friction is. Anywhere around here, that should be the friction. So let's just guess. Now, with this guess in place, and with this system in place, let's go back to our diagram now. We know that this here is 90 degrees. This here is 90 degrees. And here is at some angle depending on friction, right? The angle is not 60, some angle depending on friction. We know that W bears down vertically, right? Because it's weight. And we know that three, three forces in a system that's in equilibrium forms a triangle, right? So we can put our forces that we know for sure, FW here and W weight. And then we can add in this one that we don't know exactly, right? Where it goes, but know that it must, must complete the triangle, right? We know that it must complete the triangle. So we can say, that this is how it's set up. Yeah, you can say that it must go to this point here. Yeah, you can say that this is how it's set up. Now, we don't know the magnitude, but we can assume the direction that it takes, okay? Okay, so now let's actually work the question. So we understand these directions here. This one's perpendicular and this one's slightly slanted. And we are given a lot of stuff in the, in the question. So let's start working, right? So let's quantify first the weight. 20 kgs, we know that the weight should be, or the force as a result of gravity, should be 20 kgs times 9.81, right? And we end up with 196.2. Now, we learned moments, we know moments, and we want to use it to find our unknown forces. So, how do we do that? Well, first, we want things that we can solve or resolve. When we look at FG, we say, hey, we don't have an angle. So, even if we were to say we want the perpendicular component to calculate the moment, Right? We don't know this angle here, right? We don't know it. So we can't find the perpendicular component. 
what we do know though is the angle for fw and how we find that well we know this here is 90 yeah and we know here is 60 so there are two ways 60 90 30 subtract that from 90 and you end up with 60 or the simple way where we say here here and this ground there are two parallel lines and the ladder bisects them so if this angle is 60 then this angle must be 60 right z angles as you guys would call it so here is 60 and we've decided that the best place to take moments are here on the ground because we want to find we know w right we know w here so we want it in play and we want to use it to find another two so we, we're picking points if we pick any point in the middle what will happen is that we'll end up with these two coming into play two unknowns we don't want that so we want to pick a point where we can cancel out either fw or fg we looked at fg and we realized we don't have the angle to resolve it yeah we don't have this angle to resolve it so the point we got pick is, is here so we can remove fg from the equation find F fw and then later come back and find fg yeah later come back and find fg Okay, so let's go. Let's look at the moments here. So we're gonna have two. We're gonna have here the perpendicular component of the wave, and here, right, the perpendicular component of the reaction of the wall, right? Okay. So to this here, this here, this here, this here is ninety. This here is 30. Yeah. And this here, right? Remember the, the ladder is, is like this. And this, this force is perpendicular to the ladder, right? Perpendicular to the ladder. So it forms a 90 degree angle. So if this is 30, this here should be 60. 60. And this is your right now. So this here is W cosine theta which is 60 yeah cosine 60 and this one well we already showed that this here is fw sine 60 yeah let me write that On F W sine sixty, right? And this one W cosine sixty. Good. And the distances that they act. Remember, this one is acting at this point, right? It's not at some arbitrary point here. It's acting at this point. This is where the force contacts it. It's just that. The perpendicular component, we're breaking it down into two orthogonal components that would be useful in solving this problem, right? So you're breaking down into two components like this. And even though they're not vertical and horizontal components, because they're, they're weird angles here, they still represent the force. The resultant of these two is still this one. So they're not changing the value of this force. But we are getting an orthogonal uh, um, one that's perpendicular to the member out of it, right? So it's not completely useless doing that, right? So it acts at this point here. This, same thing. This, same thing as this, yeah. So what's the distance here from the point on the ground to here? Well, that's five. And we know this force is this force is anti-clockwise, yeah? And this one is, this one is clockwise. 
So the length of the ladder is from the question. Let's go back up. A ladder five meters long. Five meters long. So the anti-clockwise moments. F W sine sixty times five meters long. Right? It's equal to this one here. It was the distance here to this point here. Well, the ladder has a mass of 20 kg and the weight of the ladder may be assumed to act at a point two meters from the lower end. So from the lower end, which happens to be a hinge point, two meters, right? Two meters. So this, the clockwise moments equal to these, right? This is W cosine 60 times times two, yeah, two. Clockwise moments equal anti-clockwise moments. Okay, and we just set this up as an equation. We know weight, okay? We know weight. This is what's here, right? Use the principle of moments with components of forces perpendicular to the ladder, right? Perpendicular to the ladder, taken about the point on the ground. This is the point on the ground. Okay? And we set up our equation. Now, we don't know FW, but we know weight. We calculated weight, just 20 kg times 9.81, right? So this is weight. And then using this equation, very easily, very easily, we can solve for FW. Okay, and we solve for that, and FW is 45.31 newtons perpendicular to the wall, right? Because we also need direction, yeah? Perpendicular to the wall. Make sure we say that. FW here, perpendicular to the wall. Perpendicular to the wall. And now, Realize that, that this value here isn't the component of FW, it's FW itself. Because here was the component, right? And then we carry over, divide, and then we carry over back the sine 60, okay? And, and divide, divide both sides by um, the sine 60. So this FW here is actually FW, right? It's not the component or anything, it's actually FW. So using this equation, I'm sure everyone could use the algebra and find out what I believe, right? Any questions? Generally. No questions. None? All right. Moving on. So, now, we found FW, we found W. So now let's remember we had this triangle. We had W, we had one angle. We don't know this angle, right? We don't know this angle. Let's call this angle theta. But now we have something new, right? We have something new, which is FW, the magnitude of FW. So using this fourth triangle now, what we can do, is solve for the force at the ground, FG. Force at wall, FW. We can use the solve for FG, force at the ground. How we do that? Simply, Pythagoras' theorem, right? Pythagoras' theorem, find the length here. Because we know the magnitude of W, we know the magnitude of FW, so we use Pythagoras' theorem. But now, after finding FG, Using Pythagoras theorem, we still need to find theta because we know FW perpendicular, perpendicular to the wall, but we don't know the direction of FG. So we need to find theta so that we can accurately describe the force at the ground, accurately describe the reactions at the ground, right? So first, Pythagoras theorem, use the two you find, simple. Carry over square root solve, FG, we find 
that to be 201.36 newtons. And after that, we still, we still, right? We still need to find this angle theta, right? So we know weight is 196.2, right? That's what we calculated, 20 kg times 9.81. And we know F, uh, FW, right? FW is 4 to 5. So to find this angle, we can just use tan theta, or if you want to use FG here, which is 201, right? If you want to use that, you can use sine or um, cosine, but I just use theta because that's what I chose. And then you put opposite, right? Tan theta is equal to this over this, right? Opposite over adjacent. Yeah, and then we just solve, carry over, tan inverse, tan inverse, tan inverse of 196.2, divided by 45.31. If you plug that into the calculator, you should get this, right, 76.996. Now we can finish off the questions by saying, FG is a force 201.36 Newtons at 77 degrees to the ground, which is what we find. This rounded is approximately 77 degrees. Good. And that's it, that's how you work this simple question. Any questions? Moving on. So, 25, same thing. Let's go straight to 26. A ladder having a mass of 30 kgs and a length of 6 meter rest against a smooth vertical wall. So once again, smooth vertical wall. The foot of the ladder stands on level ground 2.5 meters away from the foot of the wall. If the whole weight of the ladder is assumed to act vertically downwards from a point one third of its length from the end on the ground, determine the magnitude and direction of the reaction between the ladder and the wall, and the ladder and the ground. So, pretty similar setup. Here, wall, ground, some angle theta that we don't know. But we know these reactions and we know that they form a triangle, yeah? So, what differentiates this from the previous question? Well, the lack of the angle theta. But, we were given another distance, right? 2.5. They told us the foot of the ladder stands on level ground 2.5 meters away from the foot of the wall. So we can use this. We know the ladder is six meters long. We know the foot from um, the distance of the foot of the ladder from the foot of the wall is 2.5 meters, so we end up at a triangle, yeah? Six meters, 2.5, the angle theta, this here is a 90 degrees. So theta is equal to cosine inverse of 2.5, over six. Yep. Everyone understand how we got this? Theta is equal to cosine inverse of 2.5 over six. Okay. Cosine theta 2.5 over six. Cosine inverse of that is 65.356 degrees. Yeah. 
degrees. Now, what else do we need to know that's different? Okay, Joel, question? Uh, yes, sir. Um, is the, these slides going to be posted on um, YouTube as well? I, I sent you guys these on um, this PDF, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Okay, I just wanted to know if it would be on, on YouTube as well. The, this the tutorial. Video, the video, yeah, I'll post up when I. Uh, okay. I just give me a few hours okay. after the class, right? Okay, sir. Okay. The course, right? Okay. 65.2 degrees. Simple, easy. This works true. Now, another thing that differentiates this question from the other one is that they didn't state in the previous one, number 24, they said the weight acts, the weight acts at some point two meters from the end, from the bottom, right? So we just put two and we know the distance there is two. However, here they say, the whole weight of the ladder is assumed to act vertically downwards. Okay, vertically downwards, good from a point one third of its length, from the end on the ground, from the end on the ground. So from the end on the ground, some point one third of its length is where the whole weight acts. So this here is some distance one third of its length. So the length of ladder is six and one third of that, one third of that, okay, one third of that, Right by three is equal to two. Yeah. One third of six is equal to two. So the distance here is two. Okay. And then we follow the same procedure. So we figure out theta, we figure out two, and we follow the same procedure. We say FW, this angle, right? 65. whatever this angle is, 65 here. So we know the perpendicular component. Sine theta times FW times the length of this ladder, which is six. So FW sine the theta we found, 65, I'll just call it 65. 65. equal to, well, times the distance, right? Times six is equal to W, and the component here, right, is here, 60. Also the same theta, right? That's the theta. There's cosine theta, yeah. W. So similar setup. Uh, w cosine 65 this of course times the distance the distance is two meters yeah two meters here to here is two meters one third the length of the ladder so this is times two we know w right they gave us the weight of the ladder didn't they the weight of ladder is 30 kgs, right? 30 kgs. So we multiply it by gravity, gravitational constant, and put that in here. And then we solve for FW, right? Solve the equation for FW. Okay, good. This is what we do here, okay? We found the weight as 30 kgs times 9.81. And that gives us 294.3 newtons. That times cosine theta times two, right? Now this two is different, right? This two represents one third the length from the ground, right? That's what that two represents and is different from the other two, right? And then FW sine theta times six, which is the distance, of the reaction at the wall because the other end of 
the ladder rests against the wall. So the reaction is some distance, which happens to be six meters because that's the length of the wall, length of the ladder. Yep. That's where that six comes from. And then we simply just divide this whole thing here again, divide. And we solve for FW. W. W is equal to 44.96 Newtons perpendicular to the wall, again giving a sense of direction. Or we can say 45 Newtons, okay? approximately 45 Newtons. Knowing this, going back up, here, right here, the triangle of forces, we know our two, again, find this one, what do we do? Pythagoras' theorem. Then, to make sure we know the direction of this force, we wanna find the direction here, Theta, we want to find theta, we can do tan theta, or after finding this, we can do cosine or sine theta, right? Tan theta is what I use. So tan theta, 294.3, which is the weight, which is the weight, divided by 4 to 5, which is the force normal. So the weight, the force normal. you and the weight divide and then so theta is equal to 81.31 degrees okay? and we can say formally this year fg rounds to 298 newtons which is we find use it from using pythagoras theorem we can say that fg is 298 newtons at 81 degrees they're just fine to the ground and that's it that's how we work, number 26. Any questions? No. All right, moving on. Let's go back. So, sorry, all you're, on, all you're in the question here, um, 297.7 at one. Okay, yeah, you, so, I essentially, like, wrote- No, no I just wanted to see the answer. All is written to end the question. Conclusion. Yeah, so I just wrote this back here. But yeah, so this here is you could write this 2 FG is equal to 297.71 Newtons at the 81 degrees, you find 81 degrees to the ground. To the ground. I just wrong this off, right? I just wrong this off. 298, 297.71, right? I just wrong that off. Oh. 298 Newtons. Because, of course, you, you need to remember that the reaction of the wall isn't just a reaction, isn't just a magnitude, right? It's also a direction because a reaction of the wall. Let's say this here, and we put the ladder. What if instead of a reaction going this way, right? What if the reaction was going this way, yeah? The system would be very different, yeah? Or this way, yeah? That would mean that this wall is wrong. So we need to give a sense of direction of where the force is going. So that's why this little statement is here. Um, in your test, if you don't write this, it's fine. No need to. But you must find this angle, right? You must find this angle. Because otherwise, I'm going to be like, okay, this force, where is this force? How is this force oriented, right? Is this force a straight force up? Is this force to the side? Is this force going into the ground? What is this force? Is this force? pulling this ladder into the ground, what's this force doing? Or is this force 
keeping this, this ladder up, right? So we need a direction. It does that. It's very easy as long as you figure out this first part, right? As long as you know this equation part, and all three of the questions are the same thing here and here. So as long as you figure out sine theta and cosine theta, yep, sine theta and cosine theta times the distances, you're fine, right? I think you fancy. So I know Miss may have worked it slightly different, yeah. And if you understand Miss Mrs. Method, you know, go do it. This is easy. So here I have number 25. Let me just give a brief explanation and I'll let you guys work it and tell me if you find any difficulties, right? A uniform ladder, uniform, right? A uniform ladder four meters long and having a mass of 25 kgs rests against a smooth vertical wall at A and is supported on rough horizontal ground at B. The ladder is inclined at 60 degrees to the horizontal, determine the magnitude and direction of the reactions at the ground and wall respectively. So same thing we've been doing, they gave us the angle. So exactly like number 24, the only difference is they say uniform ladder, and they say uniform ladder, and they say it's four meters long, having a mass of 25 kg. So we know in uniform bodies, where's the center of gravity in the middle? So if the ladder is four meters long, center of gravity is that divided by two. So this ladder is at a point two meters from either end, right? Is at the center, two meters, right? That's all you need to know to work this question. Center of gravity equal to two, um, a distance two meters from either end, right? And that's where all the weight is gonna be. So work this question yourself and tell me if you find any difficulties. Take 10 minutes, work it, and if no difficulties, we can end the class, right? But really try work it and then we look at the answers together. And if you guys get stuck any at any part along the way, just ask the question, right? I get so take 10. Excuse me, sir. Uh, which que um, question comments similar to the test question? Hey, yeah, so, um, yeah, you guys just work number 25, right? And if you have any difficulties, 
tell me, right? I heard someone was saying something just now about which um test to go in the class to have are we gonna have which um question we're gonna have in the test. I don't know exactly which question, but as I was saying, uh if I was Mrs. Sill, maybe number 26, right? But don't be too certain, right? Know how to work all the questions. But for this tutorial, I want you guys to work 25 and tell me if you have any difficulty. Okay, sir. All right, any issues so far? Anyone finish? Mm -hmm. Everyone finish? How long has it been? Three minutes? Ten? All right, so if you're finished with it and you don't have any questions, uh, this should pretty much prepare you for the test, right? So focus on number 26, but I would recommend that you work all three right that's it that's the end of this class if i uh, if you haven't finished the question please finish it off and i'll stay in the group for a few more minutes and you can ask me questions if you can't get the answer right so the answers are here 78 
mutants and two fifty five point two six at some four degrees, right? Excuse me. Yeah. Um, the question says that um, the ladder is inclined at 60 degrees to the horizontal. Yeah. Does that mean that, that the 60 degrees is going at the top? It has to face the, the horizontal line, right? Uh, let's go back to the diagram, right? This one. So what that 60 degrees means, this is diagram 24, but it's it's essentially the same thing, right? It's just that the distances are slightly different, but the same 60 degree angle. A 60 degrees means here, right? Inclined to the ground. This is the ladder, this is the ground. That's what the 60 degrees here means, right? Oh, thank you. Yeah. So remember FG here is just something that closes this triangle. This angle here, is not the same as this, right? Right? This angle here is not the same as this. Very different, right? So keep that in mind, right? Not 60, but this one is ladder underground. That's all, thank you. Let me put the answers back up. I think it just um, show how the angle is the same for the weight as the, um, the base of the ladder. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, so let's draw this back, right? Okay, so here, ground. Ground, ladder, and the weight. Yeah, the weight. Here is 60 degrees. Right? Great. Now, this force is coming out perpendicular to the ladder, right? Perpendicular. Let's put it in the red. Then right. Right? That's the perpendicular one. That, that's the one you want. This one here is W. But this is the one we want, right? So here is 60. This here is 90, yeah? So what will this here be? 30, right? 30. Uh, let's call it, let's call it Y. Y. So here, well, what's that equal to? 180 minus 90. Plus 60. Minus 60, right? Yeah, or minus 90 plus 60. Okay. So this is uh, what's remaining 30, right? So this Y is 30 feet. Remember this here, right? This here is perpendicular to the ladder. So this here is 90 degrees, right? So here and here. So Y plus, let's call this angle here X, plus x must be equal to 90, right? Perpendicular, perpendicular to the ladder. If y is 30, then x should be 60, right? 90 minus 30 is 60. That's how we get 60 here. No? Okay, thanks. Sir. Yeah, good. So they, they got a lot of different ways to find out, but you know, this is how I do it. There's
Uh, win, no. Uh, my number is the same number that are on all the test papers, right? So the same number you send all your tests to, that's my number, right? Same number that you watch up all your tests to. Oh, and you guys remember, make sure Mr. Sill has your email. It is test not right here. All right, so I see a lot of people leaving. That means you guys are getting the questions. So, did anyone not finish the questions yet? Still having difficulties? Let me know and maybe I can help you out. All right, so as long as you finish. All right, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.